Did you know that the fonts you're using in your marketing graphics, on your website, and inside of your business are copyright protected and you need the proper licensure to make sure you're using them properly without getting in trouble? Let's talk to a lawyer to learn more. My name is Tony Oyakasas. I'm an adjunct professor of entertainment law and IP at New York Law School. And I have an Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok account called The IP Professor that is dedicated to all things in talk to property. Tony, let's talk a little bit about graphic design for businesses when it comes to designing our websites or the graphics we're using to market or our marketing campaigns or anything that we're making as a business. We have to use fonts in order to create the words to communicate our message to our viewers. But when it comes to fonts, we know that it's important to make sure we have the appropriate licensure to use those fonts because not everything is available for public use. So can you break this down from a legal perspective for us? Yeah, so uh, you know, this boils down to understanding that every font that is designed by a graphic designer likely is protected under some aspect of copyright, um, mainly because of the the way each letter is kind of coded and created and whatnot. That said, when you go on certain third party websites or any any uh, software that offers uh, a, a variety of different fonts to choose from you would need to be very mindful of reading the terms of use related to those fonts. Most times, if not all the time, personal use of those fonts are totally permitted. But it's when you're using it for commercial use that it becomes a totally different ball game and triggers some little extra things like paying you know, the, the graphic designer a certain fee to download it for commercial use. You're basically paying for the commercial use license. Uh, there may be a scenario where it may even require certain permission from, you know, someone else to be able to use that font in a, a commercial capacity. Realistically, there are, you know, umpteen ways of getting that extra permission, but that is necessary in order to, to use that font in a in a commercial capacity. You know, whether we're talking about, a, a, you know, web website design, or if you were going to make, let's say, a, a flyer, or even uh, like a digital ad spread, if you were to post it on, you know, let's say, you know, as a banner on, you know, a, a news website or, or anywhere else where they accept ads. So all that to say, you really want to be mindful of what those terms are. Uh, what are you allowed to do with that font? What are you not allowed to do with that font? going through the terms and conditions of each website where you're downloading these fonts for commercial use is gonna be very imperative because it's gonna lay out all those necessary permissions. On the other hand, you could also use other websites, or not websites, but software to use fonts for commercial, uh, in a commercial capacity. And a great example of that is Adobe Fonts. Tons of different options to choose from, all organically created by Adobe. Uh, it is not going to infringe on anyone else's copyright or raise any sort of other broader intellectual property issues. So it's pretty much fair game. And because you have, have a Creative Cloud membership, you have full authority and full access to use that font in a commercial manner. So it's not going to raise any red flags as long as you're downloading it through an Adobe font, uh, you know, uh, the Adobe font software. That said, it goes without saying, there are graphic designers that are ambitious and they like to make fonts that mimic the font types of pretty notable IP franchises. Like for example, Star Wars, the very iconic font for that, uh, the Avengers font from all the Marvel movies, uh, Harry Potter, uh, even from television shows and sitcoms. And one that comes to mind would easily be something like Family Matters, which has a very unique typeface, even Full House, also very distinct type of uh, typeface. No matter how you slice or dice it, those typefaces are associated with those specific, you know, copyrights, those specific uh, 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 franchises. If you use a Star Wars font for your website, and let's say you're in the business of tech and or IT, let's say you have an IT business and you use the Star Wars font, saying you know something to the effect of you know. Um, We'll take your we'll take your computer. Uh, I, I know I'm ad libbing here. We're we're, we're going to take your computer software and computer skills to the next galaxy. Whatever, super cheesy. Don't, I, I'm not good for copy. <laughs> so, so if you use if you say something like that, obviously alluding to galaxies and Star Wars, and you're using the Star Wars typeface font that you found on defont.com. Don't you think that Lucasfilm is going to come after you and give you a cease and desist and tell you not to use that font? Of course they are. So be even more mindful of not only the terms and the permissions that are allowed when you are using someone else's font for commercial purpose, but also be mindful of the exact typeface itself. If you see a font that 
has some type of affiliation with Back to the Future or Jurassic Park or Star Wars or any other major film franchise, avoid, avoid, avoid. Because odds are that graphic designer didn't even have permission to make that typeface in the first place. Uh, you know, th that's something that would require an, each, an, an even extra layer of, you know, permissions. And even then, I highly doubt that Lucasfilm would grant you permission to use a Star Wars typeface font for your website. I, I could say that quite, you know, quite confidently. So <laughs> dot your I's, cross your T's when you're doing the evaluation of how you're using uh, fonts for commercial use. Um, I, I, again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to read the terms and conditions of uh, the websites where you are downloading fonts understanding what is permitted use in a commercial manner, what is not permitted under a commercial use license. And then of course, using websites like Adobe Font is definitely the way to go because you get that broad commercial use license for sure. And if you are looking for fonts for your business, I have a website I absolutely love using. I will link that down below for you so you can check that out. And you want to make sure when you are downloading these fonts that you're reading the terms of service and you're aware of how far you are allowed to use these fonts. Sometimes it is just across the board. Sometimes you have to license it per project, which if you use the site that I am going to link for you down below, you do have to license it for each individual project, but you're not paying more money. You're just designated that it is attached to a project project that you're doing so that that person gets paid from the collective pot of that website and how they are doing their subscription. So there's lots of options for you, but you have to make sure that you are doing it the appropriate way so that everybody is taken care of as we're moving forward with your content creation. If you've got questions on the legal side of your content creation and running your business, now is the time to go ahead and drop that. Tony's coming back for upcoming episodes. And as always, you can reach out to Tony on his social media. Tony, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at The IP Professor, and you can check out my entertainment law podcast called End Scene with new episodes dropping every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Drop your questions below. Tony is coming back for upcoming episodes, and we're dropping daily episodes here on the channel to help you navigate the world of entrepreneurship to make this your most profitable year ever with the least amount of stress, overwhelm, and time commitment on the content you are creating. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.